Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be looking at some questions regarding QSAT CAT. Now, QSAT is a federal university found in India, and it is a pit stop for people pursuing a career in science and technology. In order to enter into the Cochin University of Science and Technology, you need to take the Common Admission Test, also known as CAT. Now, this exam is rigorous, but however, with training, everyone can ace it. Now, in order to train for it uh, effectively, you need to analyze previous year questions. And that's what this video will be doing. So today, we'll be looking at some questions asked in previous years of the CAT exam, especially in the subject of chemistry. Let's start off with our first question. The number of electrons, neutrons, and protons in a spe species are equal to 10, 8, and H, respectively. The proper symbol of the species is 1608, 1808, 18 neon 10, 1608, 1608 to minus. So, which of these becomes the correct option? Now remember, the number of electrons is 10, the number of neutrons is 8, and the number of protons is 8. Using the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, we can find the correct species. So, how do we do that? Well, the number on the top here is what we call the atomic number. I mean, the number on the top is what we call the mass number. And the number here at the bottom is the atomic number. And the number here is what we call the charge. So if you have a lot more electrons than the neutral stage, then you will have a charge associated with the atom or this ion. Now, how do we calculate atomic number? Well, atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So in this case, the atomic number equals 8. What about the mass number? The mass number is equal to the number of protons and neutrons. So it'll be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, so that's 8 plus 8, which gives you 16. So the atomic number is 8, and the mass number is 16. So we need to have a species here which has the mass number 16 and atomic number 8. So that means options B and C are incorrect, because they have the mass number as 18. And neon has an atomic number 10, which is also incorrect. Now whether it's option A or option D is what we need to find out. So we now know that the species is oxygen. Now, in a neutral atom, the pro number of protons will be equal to the number of electrons. So in an oxygen atom, there will be eight protons and eight, neut eight electrons. However, here, the number of electrons is equal to 10. So we know that oxygen has a charge. It's not neutral. So, for a neutral atom of oxygen, it will have 8 electrons. Now, this species here has 10 electrons, so it will be O2 minus, which will have 10 electrons. Now, the ne negative charge is given for an excess of electrons. The positive charge is given when there's a lack of electrons. So, therefore, option D will be the correct option because it shows the correct charge. So you have 16, that's the mass number, which is number of protons and neutrons. You have 8, which is the atomic number, that's the number of protons, that's correct. And since we have number of electrons is 10, which is 2 more than the neutral atom, we'll have a charge of 2 minus. So therefore, option D is the correct option. Now let's look at another question. A 600 watt mercury lamp emits monochromatic radiation of wavelength 331.3 nanometers. How many photons are emitted from the lamp per second? You have the value of h and the value of the velocity of light. So, how do we solve this question? Now remember we have power as 600 watts, which is basically energy by time. So therefore, the energy that's required for this question is 600 joules. What's the reason? We're finding out how many number of protons are emitted 
photons are emitted from the lamp per second. So the energy per second gives us power, so the energy would be 600 joules for that second. We know the value of h, we know the value of wavelength, 331.3 nanometers, which we can write as 3.313 into 10 raised to minus 7 meters. So now that we got all the values, let's use the formula. The formula here is for photoelectric effect. Now in the photoelectric effect, the energy of n photons will be equal to n times h nu, which is Planck's constant times frequency, which will be n times h times c divided by lambda, where c is the velocity of light and lambda is the wavelength. So. For this question, 600 would be our energy, n is unknown, h is 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 34, c is the velocity of light, 3 into 10 raised to 8, divided by lambda, which is 3.313 into 10 raised to minus 7. I mean, my, not, not 10 raised to minus 7, it's 10 raised to, yeah, of course it's 10 raised to minus 7, so let's take a step back. All right, so let's use the eraser. So the denominator must be the wavelength, and the wavelength that we have is 3.313 into 10 raised to minus 7. Okay, now let's rewrite the equation in terms of n. So n here will be equal to 600 times the wavelength, the denominator. So that's 3.313 into 10 raised to minus 7 divided by the, the rest of the numerator, so that's 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 34 times 3 into 10 raised to 8. Now we can write 600 as 6 into 10 raised to 2, which, because 600 is 6 times 100, 100 is 10 squared. Now 3 divides 6 twice, 3.313 divides 6.626 twice, 2 divides 2 once, so therefore what we get is 1 times 10 raised to 2 and then we have plus 34 because there's a minus 34 10 raised to minus 34 in the denominator so when you put it into the numerator it becomes plus then we have a minus 7 and then there's a plus 8 in the denominator the exponent so when it goes to the numerator it becomes minus so minus 8 so therefore the value of n will now be equal to 1 times 10 raised to 2 plus 34 gives you 36, 7 plus 8 gives you 15, so it's 36 minus 15. You can do the subtraction easily, 1, 2. So therefore, the number of photons will be equal to 1 into 10 raised to 21. So this will be the correct value for the number of photons emitted per second. So the correct option among the following is option C, 1 into 10 raised to 21. As you can see here, we need to find out the correct exponent because the base is the same. So therefore, all the other options are incorrect because the exponent is incorrect. Option C, 10 raised to 21 is the number of photons emitted from the lamp, which emits a monochromatic radiation of wavelength 331.3 nanometers and which has a power of 600 watts. Now let's look at the final question of this episode. The shortest wavelength in the hydrogen spectrum of the Lyman series where RH or the Rydberg constant is 109.678 per centimeter is 1000.7 angstroms, 1215.67 angstroms, 1127.3 angstroms, 911.7 angstroms. So how do we solve this question? Well how do we find the wavelength for the hydrogen spectrum? Now, in order to find the wavelength for the hydrogen spectrum, we use the formula 1 by lambda equals the Rydberg constant divided by n squared, where n stands for the orbit number or the shell number, which we can also write as the principal quantum number. Now, how do we find out the value of n? because we know the series in which the wavelength is present. In the Lyman series, n is always equal to 1. The n final will always be equal to 1. So therefore, 
1 by lambda in this case will be the Rydberg constant divided by, well, let's say 1 squared. So that's 1. So you have Rydberg constant equals 1 by lambda centimeters. Um, yeah, 1 by lambda per centimeter. So in order to find lambda, we take lambda on the other side, you get 1 by Rydberg constant in centimeters, which we can write as 1 by Rydberg constant into 1,000 meters. So let's not go into calculations here because, again, this value, the shortest wavelength, is something that we are asked a lot, so it's a good idea to memorize it. So the thing that we are supposed to do is divide 109.678. We have to divide 1 divide with 109.678. So you'll get a six digit number that's nine point something into 10 raised to six. I mean, into 10 raised to minus six centimeters. So that will be the answer that we get from this division. So now we know that the first digit would be nine. Let's look at the following options. The first three options, A, B, and C, start with one. They're 1,000 angstroms, 1,200 angstroms, 1,100 angstroms. Option D is the only one which starts with a 9, 911.7 angstroms. So therefore, option D would be the correct option. If you were to actually do the calculation here, you'll get 9.117 into 10 raised to minus 6 centimeters. You'll have to divide it by 1,000 to get it in meters, and then, I mean, you have to divide it by 100 to get it in meters, and then you have to rewrite the, what do, what do we call it? You'll have to rewrite the decimal point in order to get 911.7 into 10 raised to minus 10 meters, which 10 raised to minus 10 meters is the same thing as angstroms, so therefore 911.7 angstroms is the correct option. So option D is the correct option for the shortest wavelength in the hydrogen spectrum of the Lyman series when RH is 109678. So again, this value is something that is a good, it can be memorized because it's uh, often asked in questions. So the shortest wavelength of the Lyman series spectrum would be the shortest wavelength of the entire spectrum. So therefore, option D, 911.7 angstroms, is something that you need to memorize. Just keep it in the back of your head, and whenever the calculations come in, you can just substitute the value instead of calculating all of the stuff. But in case you don't know the value, then you can do the calculation here, and you'll get an approximate answer, which you can equate with the option. So that concludes this episode of Fast Track for QSAT CAT. We hope you found it interesting. If you are willing to access more of our useful and interesting content regarding QSAT or other um, examinations, then please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Agile Rank Mate. So, uh, if you want to get the latest updates, so all, all we can do is press the notifications icon and set it to all, and that's present below the video. If you like what you saw, then you can always comment on it in the comment section, again, present down below. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, stay alert, bye-bye for now.